This is this uh, is either gonna make us fall in love even more, or we're gonna break up. <laughs> What do you remember? Because you obviously remember something totally different than I do. I remember coming home one day after work and I saw this creepy white baby crib on the front of our porch. It's not a crib, it's a bassinet. Okay, fine. The bassinet. Why did you bring it home? Because I didn't want it to be thrown away. You know, my little brother slept in it, my stepfather slept in it. It's a little bit sentimental. It's like preserving something of the family. And then our baby will sleep in it eventually one day. Do you remember how annoyed I was? Would well, you remember how annoyed I was? I took it out so I could lend it to some of my friends that were about to have babies. It's not like we were getting pregnant anytime soon. I proposed to Victoria three years ago, and the engagement is dragging on. I postponed fertility clinic appointments, canceled therapy sessions. All I can hear in my head are the words, tsu ku, tsu ku. So cool. I was relieved when the bassinet was out on tour, but then it would return. It was like an unwanted house guest that has clearly overstayed its welcome. Trust me, I was tempted a few times during recycling week. I just felt suffocated by the thoughts of what a baby would mean in my life. Before I was tall enough to see the top of the mahjong table, I learned my first Chinese idiom. You swallow the bitter for the sake of saving face and not bring shame upon the family. I remember when my parents divorced. Instead of staying with relatives, my mother moved us to a shelter. She would rather have us live with strangers than her family live with shame. I didn't ask questions. Because even at the age of six, I knew not to. Looking back now, I have nothing but respect for my mother. Because making personal sacrifices is a rite of passage, like a bar mitzvah or a quinceanera, minus the fun elaborate party. At family gatherings, Victoria is still referred to as jalpeño, good friend. And I don't correct anyone. I'm out, but I'm not rainbow flag tattooed on my forehead kind of out. So I can't imagine me, Vic, and future baby rolling up to our Bayou Yen, the 100-day baby celebration, without the fear that I'm forcing my parents to have to endure questions like, who's the daddy? Will the baby know him? Will the baby take his last name? I'm uncomfortable taking up that much space in a family where other gay loved ones haven't even introduced their jalpeno. My family gave me an inch, and I'd be taking a mile. Hashtag Chinese guilt which makes me worried about my future baby. Future baby deserves a blank slate. But before they can wipe their own ass, will I be forcing my future baby to forever defend their same-sex parents' choices? And what if future baby does what my family has done for generations? What if they don't ask questions because they know not to? What if they also so cool? Despite all the mommy groups for same-sex parents, there is no pamphlet that can help me navigate these fears. But it's not like my great-grandmother had a pamphlet, or her daughter, or hers. I don't know if the fear will ever go away. Maybe not.
And if not, we can always just get a dog, right? <laughs>